Welcome to this ninth Sunday of Pentecost, August 2nd. We're glad you can join us as we celebrate God's word and hear the love and wisdom of God has for us today. I do have a sad announcement that Carlin McMullen passed away Thursday evening. If you could keep the McMullen family in your prayers, especially Pat and Julia, who have cared for her mother for the past year. And now for more announcements. Please continue to support our ministry here at Community Lutheran Church by your generous giving. You can give at CLC by visiting our website at clc19945.org slash giving. Thank you for your generosity. We want to remind you that video readers are still needed to participate in our online worship by reading the lessons or prayers, and you can email Pastor Mark at revmolter at gmail.com for more details. The Church Council is still reviewing state guidelines for safe reopening for in-person worship. We will not reopen until we have a clear plan, so please be patient. We want to celebrate some wedding anniversaries this week. Paul and Alice Hankey celebrate 61 years of marriage on August 1st, and Lou and Lonnie Riley celebrate 36 years of marriage on August 4th. Our food pantry is open the first Tuesday of the month, and we want to thank all those who continue to donate food, pack boxes, and help distribute food. Thank you to all those who are participating in our White Bag Lunch Program. Please continue to check the website and your emails for more announcements. Let us gather around the font of mercy, remembering our baptism and that we are soaked in the waters of grace. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The call to confession is always a call to experience God's mercy. In admitting the truth of our loving Creator, we open ourselves to the experience of grace and healing. Trusting in that divine love, let us first pray in silence. Pray with me. Holy One, at times when we hear the bad news of the world, it is as though we've been in the middle of a bad dream. And then we turn over and go back to sleep, ignoring the plight of others. It is hard to see tragedy and suffering. It is hard to admit whatever responsibility we might have in the plagues and systemic evil of the world. It is hard to work for the good when the good seems so far off. So help us, dear Lord. Give us courage to see clearly. Give us strength to do our part to confront evil, violence, bigotry, hate, and greed. Give us grace to forgive others and ourselves, and give us faith to follow you. This is our prayer offered in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, calls us to follow him, and he will not lead us astray. His path is one of forgiveness and renewal. Know that you are forgiven, and so you are ready to go out and serve. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. We pause. Our hymn is Praise and Thanksgiving, hymn 689 in the ELW.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading for today is from Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 5. But first, a brief introduction. God invites Israel to a great feast at which both food and drink are free. God also promises to make everlasting covenant with all the people, with promises that previously have been limit, limited to the Israel. As David was a witness to the nations, these nations shall now acknowledge the ways in which God has glorified Israel. And now the reading. Yo, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine, milk, without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader, a commander for the people. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord our God, the Holy One of Israel, for he, has, for he has glorified you. I forgot the words afterwards. <laughs> Today's psalm comes from chapter 145, verses 8 through 9 and 14 through 21. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The word of the Lord. 
The epistle for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. This begins a new section in Paul's letter in which he will deal with the place of Israel in God's saving plan. He opens by highlighting how Israel's heritage and legacy include being God's children, having God's covenants, being given God's law, participating in worship of God, and receiving divine promises. And now the reading. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had heard it, that John the Baptist had died, he went away from there in a boat to a deserted spot by himself. The crowds heard it and followed him on foot from the towns. And when he came out and saw the large crowd, he was sorry for them and he healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him. This is a deserted spot, they said, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. They don't need to go away, said Jesus. You give them something to eat. All we have here, they said, is five loaves of fish and five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them here to me. He told the crowds to sit on the grass, and then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and he looked up to heaven, and he blessed the loaves, and he broke them, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everybody ate and was satisfied. And they picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces. There were about 5,000 men who had eaten, besides the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father in heaven and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is probably a very familiar passage of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we often look at this as a, a miracle of physics, that somehow Jesus was able to transform this meager amount of stuff through magic or whatever else and make it feed a bunch of people. That may be true. However, there is a lot going on in this story that I think maybe we miss. I think the first thing we miss is that Jesus had just heard his cousin, John the Baptist, had died. And he went to go away by himself. Those of you who have known anyone who has died, know especially someone who you've loved and known and Admired, you just want to be and go away by yourself, and that's what Jesus does. And yet the crowd follows him. And so Jesus just can't get away. But how does Jesus respond in the midst of all this grief? He heals them, and he feeds them. Which is rather unusual, I think, because I think this feeding of the 5,000 story is in contrast 
to the story that was previously in which Herod the Great had had a great banquet and was showing this lavishness and John the Baptist was killed at this feast. And here Jesus has his own feast in which nobody is killed, but life is given. I also think that we miss the fact that 5,000 is a lot of people. We also miss the fact that there were women and children, so it was probably a very large crowd. I think we also miss the fact that for this large group of people to gather, it was probably the entire population of many of the surrounding villages. Herod the Great was a ruler, and he was not a very nice ruler. And so whenever you have those wonderful stories in history of about, you know, someone usually dies and then there's usually a leader that rises up and gathers the troops in rebellion. And here, John the Baptist dies and they follow Jesus. And what do they expect of Jesus to gather the troops and start a rebellion? But no. Jesus doesn't start a rebellion. He heals and he feeds this multitude. I think sometimes maybe the, the miracle is about multiplying the physical food, but I think sometimes the, the greater miracle, I think, is getting these 5,000 men and other crowd to be able to come together and cooperate without much of a fuss. It is difficult to get a crowd of any size to really cooperate and do anything if you're familiar with human nature. And yet Jesus, through his compassion for the crowd, is able to heal this large group of people and provide order and peace and a meal that satisfies. We also maybe miss the fact that it's not Jesus who had all those things ready or who did all that stuff. It was the disciples. Jesus simply asked what they already had. And he took it and he blessed it. And the disciples did the rest. In seminary, we, we often learned about the, what they called the loaves and fishes model of ministry. Meaning that we would look at what our ministries had and rather than being woe is me about what we don't have, we would take what we had and give thanks. We would take what we have and give thanks and thank God and then use what we had to do the ministry in which we were called to. And somehow, God is able to use that. When we focus on what we don't have, then that's all we focus on is what we don't have. But if we are truly thankful about what we have been given, we can live in abundance. The story relates really well to this Isaiah passage, Isaiah 55. I encourage you to read it this week. It's one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture. But it talks about the grace of God. Talking about, uh, so um, the time in which the Bible was written, money really wasn't a thing quite yet. The, the uh, status of having wealth and prosperity was seen in being able to provide a feast. 
And so the Lord provides a feast for us. A feast of grace and mercy. If we just trust in him. Jesus provides for us a feast when we have the Eucharist. Which, in, which, in, which means the thanksgiving. When we give thanks for all that God has, we are given a feast of mercy and grace. And maybe if we lived into that, the world would be a better place. The kingdom of God that Jesus offers is in stark contrast to what we what the world hopes or expects. As I mentioned before, this is the moment in the story when the leader rallies the troops and starts a rebellion. But Jesus' rebellion is different. Jesus' way of moving forward is one of peace, one of abundance, one in which all are satisfied. We are called to imitate Jesus and let us follow this example that even in the midst of our pain and our grief and our own need that we have compassion on the world. Let us give thanks for the loaves and fishes in, us, in our lives. Let us give thanks for Jesus, who was able to multiply what meager things we have for the sake of the world. Amen. The hem is the Church of Christ in Every Age, 729 in the ELW.
Church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the the Father Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of God's care and upheld by the Spirit, let us pray for all who are in need, responding to the words, Lord, you are good to all, with the phrase, hear our cry and save us. O God, our Savior, bless your church around the world, where the believers must be isolated from one another, be present through your gracious word. Give to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders wisdom for their tasks in this challenging time. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry and and save save us. O God, Redeemer of all, bless the Jewish people with your covenant promises. Bring an end to global anti-Semitism and strengthen ties of cooperation and friendship between Christians and Jews. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry and and save us. us. O God, creator of a wondrous earth, protect the glories of your seas and land. Replenish groundwater supplies, refresh lakes and ponds, send rains where there is drought, and shelter forests from wildfires. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry cry and and save us. O God, sovereign of the world, Form the leaders of nations to strive for justice for all. Guide our government in dealing with China. Strengthen the world's democracies. Bring an end to racism in our society. Direct our elected officials in how to govern with integrity. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry cry and and save us. us. O God, storehouse of goodness, visit all who face the coronavirus, especially those who are incarcerated. Give us, O Lord of life, a vaccine. Assist all who face eviction from their residence. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body or spirit, especially those we name before you now. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry cry and and save us. us. O God, giver of bread, teach us how to feed the hungry, the children starving in war zones, the families who cannot afford groceries, the homeless in our streets, the farmers devastated by pestilence. Give all creatures their food in due season. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry cry and and save us. us. O God, lover of our souls, receive now the petitions of our hearts. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cries and and save us. O God, everlasting mercy, We praise you for the lives of all who have died in the faith, especially this week for Dominic and all who, like him, preached your word with power. At the end, bring us all your saints to your heavenly banquet. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry cry and and save us. us.
Lord, we lift up the disciples here in this place who are in need of your hand of healing. We pray and give you praise for successful surgeries this week for Bill Kunst and Pat McMullen and Chuck Levine. We thank you that they are on their way toward healing. We pray for all those who are suffering in both mind and body in our community. Be with them and give them peace. Help us to be your hands and feet that we may care for them. Lord, you are good to all. Hear our cry and and save us. Lord, we lift up those who have died in the faith, especially Carlin McMullen. We thank you for her life. Be with all those who grieve her loss and help us to trust in your mercy and that she rests in your arms. Lord, you are good to all. Hear Hear our our cry and and save us. us. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer all these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word of God. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Spirit of God fall afresh on us. Thank you for joining us this Sunday and a reminder that we have a 10 a.m. Zoom coffee hour and you can join us as we discuss the scripture lessons, connect with each other and pray for one another. And that's 10 a.m. on Zoom and you can find the link on our website at clc19945.org and you can also find other ways to connect with us on our website.